another very sunny, still beautiful day here in Montreal, Canada. The weather has been very kind over really what amounts to two weeks of tennis here in Montreal. This is semi-finals day at the Players Limited International. It is also the Canadian Open National Tennis title. Good day to you, everyone. I'm Cliff Drysdale. A tremendous lineup of semi-final matches for you. Lendl and Agassi will play in the second match today, and boy, a lot of questions will be answered in that match. That is for sure. Then John McEnroe will repeat against Jay Berger in the first of those two semi-final matches. Well, let's take a look at the first match, along with the fiery one, Fred Stolli, or I should say the second match, actually, Fred. Ivan Lendl, the number one player in the world, and Andre Agassi. You, when you look at Agassi's year, it has not been that good a year, but he has a chance for him to really kind of redeem himself, isn't it? An interesting one, Cliff, because a uh, different set of circumstances for both players. Andre Agassi coming into this match is looking to try and find some form. Maybe he did that yesterday. On the other hand, Ivan Lendl, he knows how well he's playing. He's looking for a lot of match play going into the US Open. How do you see it, Fred? I mean, you saw uh, uh, Agassi play a very good match last night. Other than that, he's also been a little scratchy. Well, he's been searching to find his form, but Ivan Lendl, I think uh, it's going to be interesting today because from the back of the court, Lendl hasn't been too good. Today, he may be able to get groove because I don't expect that Andre Agassi is going to serve and volley too much, and that's where one of the problems Ivan Lendl's had during the week has been his second serve. Okay, well, I'm looking forward to that. It's going to be match number two. In the first match, you're going to see a repeat, Mary Carrillo, of the match that was played last Sunday right here on ESPN between McEnroe and Berger. How do you see that one? It'll be hard to repeat that kind of quality as we saw last week. It was really, there was nothing between Berger and McEnroe until the final last few games when McEnroe reeled off the last 13 points. Neither player is playing as well this week. Uh, both needed three sets in their quarterfinal matches to get here. And that's why I'm going to give the nod to John McEnroe. If, if he serves well and if he can attack Berger's serve, uh, better than he did last week, I think he'll win. It's a close call, isn't it, Mary? 13 points, yes, but at that point, just before those 13 points, Berger was in control. Not only that, but Berger is such a great competitor. McEnroe has grown very respectful of him yeah. in, in just one week. So if it comes down to who's willing to fight more, then I'd give the edge to Berger. It'll go on form. Well, we'll find out. It certainly is going to be interesting, and it is interesting, isn't it, that Berger is so much respected by John McEnroe. The Canadian Open is brought to you by Volvo, a car you can believe in. By AT&T, the right choice. And by Penn Tennis Balls, you've seen one, you've seen them all. Semi-finals day, Canadian Open Tennis Championships. What a lineup we have. McEnroe, Jay Berger, up next. Stadium in Montreal used to be the home of the Expos of baseball fame. They're sadly going through a slump. They're not too happy with the Expo team here in Montreal at the moment. This is semi-final date, though, of the Canadian Open singles, and what a lineup we have. Taking a look at Mackinac and Berger, let's take a look at the winning edge, and here's how we saw it. Mary? Well, we gave the serve and volley, obviously, to John Mackinac, and Berger so solid off the ground, we gave him the nod. On the surface, just because Mackinac is a serve and volleyer, this, this court uh, rewards, I think, serve and volley tennis more than baseline. Strategy, that's an interesting one. We gave to Jay Berger only because he is such a good thinker out there. John McEnroe tends to, he, he doesn't like accommodating his game to his opponents nearly as much as uh, someone like Jay Berger will do out on the court. He's a thinker and you can, you can watch his, the wheels and turn in his head as a match goes on. I think the strategy in the surface is a bit of a toss-up for both of them because they, uh, they both play quite well on this surface. I think this is probably Berger's best surface. Oh, I, I think you're right about that, Fred, especially because, you know, Berger is an aggressive player, though not a natural serve and volley, volleyer. He's been doing a lot of serve and volleying in the last couple of weeks. Not only that, but a hard court gives, uh, gives a high bounce, and he's very, very effective hitting the high balls. Of course, McEnroe hits such a flat flat shots off the ground that he doesn't often get a high ball except on his second serve and that's what Berger was so good at last week he in returning serve of macro first and second but particularly the second serve I think that's going to help him here too Mary I agree I think the ball is, is getting up a little higher here in Montreal than it did down in Indianapolis last week you see his uh, singles titles and he's won one in 1989, his first round, he had a bye here, and then uh, Simon Newell had a default, he had a groin injury there, so Jay Berger didn't get too much match play early in the week, which has to have helped him, because he did have a long week, then he beat Sammy Jim Alva, and then Nicholas Pereira in that great match yesterday when he came back from losing the first set tiebreaker. It's been a good year for both players, first of two semi-final matches, today the other one, Lindel and Agassi following this one, first ball.
30 years old now. New York. Resident. Won a lot of dough in his, in his time. 75 in singles titles, and that, of course, that went up from 74 because he won last week in the hard courts in Indianapolis. More titles than anybody except for Ivan Lendl, who's got 79 titles, and Jimmy Connors, who leads the all-time list. After a bye, he had a tough time against a 25-year-old Ned Caswell. As you can see, that was a three-sitter. He played better in a night match against Richie Rennenberg, but felt heavy-legged in his match, his quarterfinal match yesterday, against the, the Austrian Alex Antonich. And he just said, basically, he feels he feels a little weary this week, a little a little flat, and it's been showing. I suppose it's tougher yeah. to come back to some extent after you win a tournament on a Sunday. Yeah, and he had to work hard down in Indianapolis. It was not near as hot as it was the year before. Nevertheless, he had to work awfully hard. It was a tough mental match that he played against Jay Berger. Had to come back from break down in the third set. And then got back to what he started doing at the beginning of the match, was attacking the second serve, and it worked. That's where Berger has a little bit uh, of a rest clip, because he did get that default from Simon Yule, who unfortunately Went back to Australia after pretty severe groin pull. That is just why. The crowd think it was good. Pretty, pretty close one. He got right over the top of that. And McEnroe has not given too much ground so far today. He's around that baseline area without backing off too much. That's the way he likes to play. Game point. First game. McEnroe holds on. One game to love in this... Best of three set semi-final match. That's the Olympic Stadium. That's where the Montreal Expos play now. And the beautiful city of Montreal. We'll be back here. It's the Players Limited International Championship. It is also the Canadian Open, so a national title is at stake. The other four players left, Lendl and Agassi. Lendl beat Connell. Agassi also beat Schneider. Both of them Canadians. Then Berger over Pereira. An interesting three set match. McInerney three sets over Antonich of Austria. The matches last night, that one Agassi won was love and one. Schneider only won one game and was terribly disappointed after it. But he's had a good tournament. Berger to serve his first serve game. There was one other very interesting name that we didn't see in that draw. Tall, skinny 19-year-old named Sandin Stolle whose father played some ball a while ago. He qualified and lost to Kelly Jones in the first round here, equaling a record once held by Kim Warwick. Sandin had 11 match points against Kelly Jones, finally lost that one. Kim Warwick in 1976 had 11 match points against Adriano Panada in the first round of the Italian Open, Fred. Panada, of course, went on to win the title. <laughs> we looked around, we couldn't find anything close to that. Mary. That is the last time I want you to say that. Poor old Sandin. I mean, he spent, spent, what, a day or two getting over that. I mean, 11 match points and you lose the thing. He played well, but it's something he'd rather forget, I'm oh, sure. No, I was proud of him. He's the first <laughs> Grand Prix title he qualified for, and it's, it's good experience. He's good friends with Kim Warwick. Kim Warwick's helped him when he was at Hopkins a few years ago, so I'm sure you'll have a chat with him about that. I don't know where you dig all that stuff up from, Mary. That's great. Dirty love. Jay Berger has had his ups and downs this year, but far more ups than downs at Indian Wells. He beat Boris Becker, for example. He also beat Brad Gilbert, who's playing so well now. He beat Gomez and Pugh there before losing to Noah in the semifinals. Then he won in Charleston. You saw that alongside us at ESPN. Got the quarters in Rome and the quarters of the French. Oh, beautiful shot. 
We saw so much of this one week ago. Jay Berger able to do the same thing. He's so effective on the run, much more so on the forehand than the backhand side because those two hands limit him a bit. But if you give this man an angle, especially on the run, he can make the most of it. It's a great shot there because he covered some territory. He was in the doubles alley uh, mm -hmm. when he had to scamper across there and just with keep the two hands on the racket was quite an achievement, let alone to come up with a passing shot that he did. Game point, second game of the match for Berger. Talk about a beautiful summer, though, we've experienced this year as our ESPN summer of tennis. What great tournaments, Stratton and then Indy and now Montreal, all leading up to the U.S. Open. There's not a better way to prepare. The, uh, all those three tournaments do a tremendous amount for the players, try and make it as comfortable as they can. Let them all get in the best possible shape they can to go into their big national title at Flushing Meadow. That's why Deuce. McAdoo gave Berger an awful lot of pace. And finally beat him on that. Berger has got to pick up his serving in yesterday's match against Nicholas Pereira, a big serving volleyer like McEnroe. He only served at 44%. And again, he thought that's one of the keys against McEnroe today. from the net on that one. Well, Jay Berger said that he uh, started to serve and volley and he, if he was playing against somebody like that, he'd have to get to the point where he'd have to serve and volley, but uh, is not comfortable up there, but technically does a pretty good job. This one gets high, he should have put this away. He gives it a good crack, but hits the top of the tape and the McEnroe just not able to make it. Game point again. So Berger holds on, it is one game all in the first set. Mary, last week it was the second serve, wasn't it, of Jay Berger that really kept him in the match because uh, in the semi-finals against Aaron Crickstein, McEnroe was really able to get into it and jump all over the second serve on most occasions. He was not able to do that against, Ber against Berger in the final. Only played once before and that was last week, as you mentioned. This is the second time. Tough, tough match. 13 points in a row for McEnroe to close it out. At the French Championships, Jimmy Connors was beaten by Jay Berger, and he beat Jaime Izaga, Thierry Toulon, those names kind of just slip off the tongue, but of course Thierry Toulon is a Frenchman who plays very well, tough, tough competitor, very good tournament for him. Becker finally beat Berger in the quarterfinals. More fine returning. That match last week, that six point in the third, was Berger's first time out against McEnroe, and he returned so well, as we've been saying. I asked him after the match how he was able to return McEnroe's serve so well, and he said, I decided to guess one way, to think one way. He said, I always wondered how a guy like Connors can return so well, and he says, I think that's the trick. Commit. does have such an aggressive posture on return of serve. And against McEnroe, in a way, Mary, you have to commit because he serves uh, that angle. I mean, it's a vicious angle, either to the back end or the forehand side. How can you pick where a guy yeah, serves when he's got his back to the net against you? You don't know what's going on. Yeah. I mean, you have to guess. Yeah, yeah. you just got to go one way or yeah. the other. It's, it's like a baseball pitcher who can just pivot so much you can't tell where he'll throw. Look at that. I mean, he's only lost four matches in the year. Now, that's that's amazing stuff. It really is. And he hasn't lost to anybody other than the top three in the world. He's lost to Becker, lost to Edberg twice, and once to Lendl. It, it really is a remarkable record. at Berger beat Stefan Edberg last week. There's a two-handed reply from 
Berger, but look at the strength of that forehand. That one did get up high enough and he was able to drive that from round about shoulder height for the winner. Good week for Berger. He beat Ed Berger, as I mentioned. He also beat Tim Mayotte, another seeded player in Indianapolis. Been a very, very good guy's a solid, solid player. 30 all. Interesting shot there because McEnroe came in and played the right shot. He moved into the net. That's the success when you play that drop shot is move into the mid-court area. And uh, rather than go for the lob volley, he tried to really snap that backhand, hit right on top of the tape. He's only been broken six times this week, but he's down a break point now. Rose, the number two in the all-time prize money list with over 10 million, surpassed that mark in February in this year at Lyon. He led the tour in prize money a few other occasions in 1980, 1981 and 1984. Shows you how much that's improved. 1980 when he led the tour it was just under a million dollars. And in 1984, he went over $2 million. So it just shows you the amount of money that has come into our sport in the last seven or eight years. That is a double fault for McEnroe. That's uh, his first double fault and gives him, well, gives Berger another break point. We talked about who McEnroe has lost to. He's also beaten Lindell this year. And among others, he's beaten Mats Wielander. Deuce again, he beat Wielander at Wimbledon, and Lindell he beat in the Buick WCT Dallas Finals on grass, at least on, indoors on carpet. Great super match. And he won that tournament. He beat Brad Gilbert in the final. Quick update, speaking of Brad Gilbert in Cincinnati. There's a long rain delay. The play finally finished at 1 a.m. The Gilbert streak continues. He's won 21 of 22 matches. He beat Michael Chang early this morning. Chang had a match point. Berger's only loss since Wimbledon was the Washington final to Tim Mayock. This guy's hot going into the open. Gilbert, you mean? Yeah. Gilbert. Two games to one, first set. We've seen some serve and volley tennis from him lately, and it has worked. You saw him do it, some of it anyway, last week. We asked him about it. Here's what he said. If I'm playing a guy that's a big serve and volleyer that doesn't return service well, I'm going to be serving and volleying all the time. As he is with his uh, running around the court, isn't he? He wants to get it all out there uh, on serve and volley. As I mentioned, we have not seen a lot of serve and volley from Jay Berger. Technically, he can handle it, and it was the serve that kept him in the match in the final in Indianapolis last week. So Gilbert is in the uh, semi-final down in Cincinnati. He plays Becker now. Uh, right, he plays Becker and Vilanda will play Stefan Edberg in the other semi-final. Of course, Gilbert's got a 3-1 win record over Boris Becker, so that will be an interesting result. Mm. Vilanda beat Gomez yesterday, Edberg over Svensson, and Becker very easily over Jaime Izaga. One and two. That's Bill and the, 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 the defending champion at this year's US Open, sort of starting to play well at the right time. He's had a very poor year as far as Mats is concerned. Nothing like the year he had last year. One, two, first set.
<laughs> that forehand of McEnroe's, it is so, uh, it is so unlike most forehands that are on the tour now. He hits it with a continental grip, a slightly open racket face, and sometimes he wristed a little bit. You saw it on that occasion. Ball went long. But it has a big advantage to it, too, because he can come underneath the ball on the approach shot if he, if he has to, which the Western grip people cannot do. move from McEnroe there because he didn't give any ground from the back of the court. He held his ground and then realized that when he plays this backhand, look, plays it as short so he knows he can sneak in. Because of the two-hander, Berger has to take that other hand off there. The let court now nearly causes his downfall though. This one's riveted right at him but good hands and McEnroe's got the quickest hands in the business as far as the volley's concerned. 15-30. never see McEnroe miss a volley that easy. Boy, that was a big point, and again, he did the right thing, got the ball up, and uh, Berger having to keep his eye on the ball, so it allowed McEnroe to sneak in, and he wasn't observed by Berger at all, and he had the forehand volley right there for the asking. It looked like he either tripped or slipped a little bit on that court, because he just wasn't in position to make it, and if he had been, it would have given him 1542 break points. It's 30 off. Very good law, Berger. That won't stop McEnroe from attacking the net, but in fact, Jay Berger can win an awful lot of points lobbing off both sides, forehand and backhand. It's living on the precipice at the moment, though, Jay Berger, because McEnroe's missed the last couple of shots, and he doesn't like it. Game point. You know, the winner of this match makes over $100,000. So far, they've made... 24,000 and a half. Big difference. This is what McEnroe felt he wasn't doing enough of in last week's match against Jay Berger, the attack of serve. He, he was surprised that he wasn't able to penetrate more. That's just the kind of points he wants against Berger serve. Just ten get feet. right over that ball. Get right on top of it. He was 10 feet inside that baseline when he took control of that shot, wasn't he? He'll try to do that again right here. Another look at a second ball. Another break point for McEnroe now. The winner of the championship will make $143,000. The winner of this match in the getting to the final will make 71000 But that is a big jump from the 24000 and then some that they've made so far. There's a bonus pool in there, though, also, isn't there? A 25 for the runner-up, Fred, and 50 for the winner. Great shot. Yep. Break a serve. McEnroe has a three-game-to-one lead, similar to last week. Got out to an early start in the match, and... Uh, then let things slip in the second set, was down in the third set behind a breaker serve and then came back and reeled off 13 points in a row to close it out.
of these boys take their time. It takes a long time for McEnroe, from, even from the time that he starts his serve. Watch this now. He you know, starts to bounce the ball. There's a, there's a good, you know, five or six seconds between the time that he kind of gets into position and the time that he hits the ball, in fact. And uh, so you've got to, as a receiver, get your rhythm in tune with his. Love 30 for Berger. If you're hearing that noise, that you can hear how tightly strung Jay Berger's rackets are. That's him fiddling with his strings. McEnroe's much lower than the tension on Berger's. McEnroe went to a slightly tighter tension in, in the middle of his match last week against Berger. Oh, look at that. Surf couldn't have been much better wide. What a return, sir. This is the problem to try and consolidate these situations, and he jags this backhand a little bit, hooks it right across, a bit of a miss hit, but uh, very effective, so it gives Berger now a couple of break points. McEnroe trying to get himself going now, arguing with a couple of spectators behind his serving end. 15.40. Now, there's a baby crying back there. McEnroe's going to step back for just a moment. When Berger hit that return of serve off that wide angle, serve of McEnroe. He was actually wide of the sideline. No, I have two. Yeah, <laughs> Still got it back. The parent just apologized to McEnroe about the baby crying and John said, hey, I have two. Don't worry about it. He knows what that's like. Oh, no. A couple of missed volleys from McEnroe and Berger breaks back. So we're at 3-2 on serve. First set of this first semi-final match at the Canadian. Michael Chang and then Andre Agassi, believe it or not, a year ago he was the number three player in the world, now he's number seven, he's the third best player in the U.S. today. Brad Gilbert having such a good hard court summer and Tim Mayotte, uh, also in the top ten, five players from the U.S. in the top ten in the world. Missing in the top ten, conspicuously absent, Jimmy Connors, who along with Chris Everett has decided to play the U.S. Open again. There's a question whether Connors will get seated at the Open it would make him a very dangerous floater if he was in that draw of 128 somewhere without having a, a seed. But I'm, I'm glad to hear that both of them are going to play the Open, perhaps for the last time. Mac, Connor's the only man to win it on all three surfaces, and Chris Everett winning it more times than any, seven times. So she never won it when it was on ground. So we're back on serve here in this match. One break apiece, three games to two for McEnroe, Burger serving. McEnroe talked about the swaying. He said he, called, he said his concentration has been swaying this week. He says, uh, you know, all of a sudden it'll sway and suddenly I'd lose my serve. That's just what happened to him that last game. And he said, hopefully it'll just work itself out. He feels that he's improved his starts because he had been starting his matches of late kind of slowly. And he feels that mentally he's more prepared. But he's, got, he's had some unforced errors. And again, he says it's concentration more than anything. He said, Mary Burgess said after talking about last week that he didn't lose the match, that, uh, that he, McEnroe, won it. And, and that's true. Uh, you know, it, it's nice to get off a match and, and say, look, I played as well as I can play, and the guy just played too well at the crunch, which is exactly what happened. So this is interesting, just from the comment that Mary made here, here he's lost seven out of the last eight points. Yeah, it's just a two-game mm -hmm. funk happening right here. Oh, yeah. 
That's played like a, a real serve and volley. He but covered the net, blanketed the net, and made the right moves. There's the approach. Look, he gets down low, volley, head of the racket up, doesn't whack the court with the racket head, and there moves to this one again. Head of the racket, when he punches that shot, doesn't get down below the waist. Well played point from Jay Berger there. Three games all. to stay up there about 55 he hasn't been that high this week overall the thing is he was at 55 yesterday but it was the same sort of numbers on mm. first and second serve points one last week he got in lower percentage he was 48 percent but he was winning 88 percent on his first serves and about 60 on his second so those numbers th though his serve is more consistent it's less effective this week Boy, that's well played. It was set up by not going for the big winner. He was not comfortable with his first Can't shot at the uh, passing shot, so he hit it with a lot of heavy topspin, made McEnroe stretch, and then moved forward to cannon that two-hander. First serve percentages earlier in the week were below 50% here, and, and Mary, I think that's bad news for him. I don't think that... I think he needs to be going for the first serve. I, I, yes, I think he needs to go for it harder and not try to get it in because it's the same trap that he fell into a couple of years ago when things went downhill for him. I'd rather see his first serve percentages lower and his effectiveness higher. I still think he's got to keep it up in the, in the, like the 55, 60 range. I do. I, as a matter of fact, he's got a week off next week before the opening. When we asked him in a press conference last week what he was going to work on, he said, my first serve. Mm -hmm. He knows it how... Yeah. Oh, it's got to be there for him. Crucial. Yeah, another big passing shot for Jay Berger, 15.30. And once again, it, it happens when, when Berger just snacks on the serve. That starts it all off for him. A big, aggressive return. And McEnroe, look, look how far back he is there. He's not even close to the net. Berger hits so aggressively. Very short approach on that one, and he, he was just around that service line area. If you hit that short approach, you've got to get in another five or six feet further than he was then. 15.30. Lost his last serve game. Let's see, Mankin is walking up. He's worried about something. Let's see. Net cord, maybe? You think the serve was out? Richard Ings in the chair. Not going to take too much from that. It's still a couple of break points. So this thing has turned around. McEnroe broke serve to lead 3-1. And the wheels have fallen off. He's only won two points in the last three games. 15-40. Still say that it is terribly important for him, 11 of the last 14, to get the first serve in, but to really make it count. You hear those strings? Boy, mm. that's, when he fiddles with those strings, you can just see the tension is up around 80. <laughs> Last two serves, McEnroe has done a good job of stretching Berger. Becker thinks, I mean, Berger thinks that last serve was long. So both players testing the patience of Richard Ings and the ability to call the ball of the lines person. Two in a row. Deuce. Oh, man, another forehand volley missed by Macro. He's had, a, he's had a bag full of them, and now another break point against the serve. Look at this. He's had five chances. Mm. Berger, here comes another one. He's got to convert. He's you don't want to give McEnroe too many shots at drawing back to Deuce. Broken one, as you see, they're both broken ones. Traded serve breaks, but uh, it's a telling statistic that Berger having so many more chances. 
Oh. McEnroe's first of the day. And he never needed it more. I don't know how many times one can say it without getting redundant, but that to me is a very single most effective thing about his serve is that big left-handed serve to the forehand. He does it better than any player in the history of the game. Left-handers have traditionally served so well into the backhand side. He can do it both ways. Another forehand volley miss. Look at that ball boy. He wouldn't go. <laughs> the ball boy is going to go pick that ball up and back and those or let that racket slip back and he jump four feet back. He must not be watching it enough. He really, he's he's careless up there. Fourth break point in this game from Berger. Can't handle that many opportunities. And you've seen McEnroe in that forehand. In fact, I mean, the volley's period, as you say, is just not, he's just not keeping his eye on the ball. He doesn't usually miss those. There you go. That's more like it. Great crowd favourite here, McEnroe. They know they're going to see great tennis or they're going to see a bit of action. Now, Berger sort of moved to his left looking for that one on the backhand and didn't believe that McEnroe would go to the well again down the forehand. So, gets the serve right down the tee to the forehand once more. Back to Deuce. It also alludes to the fact that um, Jay Berger mentioned to us that he, when John McEnroe says you've got to guess where he goes so on that big break point there he thought well I've got to guess out of the backhand he went the wrong way Almost been around for 15 years, and you're still moronic enough to do that. Almost four times the error. You can't wait a couple more points in the changeover. Then you get managed that hour. That's too tough for you. That's John. Okay. And you get the idea before. I gave him the idea before. That's he's angry at a photographer. Art cites the man in the visor. Must have his motor drive on. That's the kind of thing that drives McEnroe crazy. But he's more disappointed with his own play than anything else. He's just pretty much taking it out on, on Art. Let's break point again. Well, he's missed the first serve this time, and he went to the well again, to the forehand, so let's see what uh, Jay Berger decides to do here. Stretching in the set now. 4-3 for Berger. 4 for Jay Berger represents a breaker serve here in the first set. He was down a break, as you remember. He has broken McEnroe twice, and there's Jay Berger. Uh, the guy, first of all, is a very intelligent young man, Jay Berger. He's a, and he's, he's writes notes to himself, and he reads them. Something that I think is a good idea. Something that I always thought I might do and never ever got around to yeah, doing it. You didn't point. have time to write during the changeovers. Jay Berger's written all that out before. And, uh, yeah, but I couldn't. Just, I mean, you uh, couldn't uh, write. They're, they're very simple. <laughs> they are. It's the good thing is it's very simple notes. He and his coach, Martin Fox, decided, you know, just the, the most pertinent things to remember, whether it's how to return or, or you know, where to play the backhand or whatever. They're, they're simple and he just keeps everything in mind so he's clear-headed out there. It doesn't get muddled. Interesting, Mary. I think he's a very instinctual player. I think he has very good instincts about the right thing to do at the right time. And you and you see it from him. The guy can, he's great passing shots. Now he's starting to come in a little bit. He mixes things up. And that is not something you can write down. 4-3. He'd do well, Jay Berger, to keep that first serve percentage high because, as you can see, he's only at 29% when he has to put in the second ball, up around 80 when he gets his first serve in. And he's just taken the first point of this game. 15, love. Interesting game here because McEnroe, when he broke to lead, he lost his serve immediately. So... Tough situation to consolidate that position and Jay Berger's in front 
15 love. If uh, Berger was watching Alex Antonich yesterday playing against McEnroe, because he's trying to throw a few uh, second serves into into the forehand side, but he doesn't get the kick that Antonich does on the serve, so it may not it may not do it for him. Mm. He looks that backhand side on the pass. I, I think you really want to try to avoid it. If, I'd rather, I think, I think it'd be better for opponents of Jay Berger to go up the middle against him or to the forehand side. But he loves his backhand side. I, this is where his he does it all, well, and especially does, he, this this whip backhand mm. cross court. That's his pet shot. Well, he sets that up as well. If you know if McEnroe gets to that volley, it just barely creeps back over the net and gives him a shot at the forehand. talked about yesterday was strategy and Jay Berger does think about what's going on out there in the court. Look at that. He goes down the middle here and McEnroe just half-heartedly plays that one then looks at it but Berger closed right in on that volley. That's a good move. Mm, not many options for Mac though and that was it Fred because that approach shot uh, Berger was, was very deep and right down the middle. Game point. like he'd like to get a call there but it was it looked good to us what to me pretty much identical spot as the point before yeah. he's just getting outplayed is, is what's <laughs> happening i mean burger's just playing very good ball and he he looks faster than john and he's hitting more aggressively he's just in every department he's there and so now mackinac will serve at three five first set we made the assumption yesterday that McEnroe was very flat in his match. And he was a little weary. Put a lot of it down to changing from night play, where he played a couple of matches, to getting out there early in the afternoon. would have made any difference he wouldn't have got to that backhand return as, as you said Mary that backhand side of, of Burgers is very solid watch again he hooks this one back in front of McEnroe there's the stutter step but he does take a slide there on the line his second step there she just skid a little bit caused him to fall but wouldn't have made it anyway 15 more He could have made that shot too, Berger. I mean, McEnroe was strictly reactive at the net and had to hope that Berger overplayed that ball. It's Berger who's dictating the play in this first set.
Great point from Jay Berger. Moved the ball around and it was the depth. Look at this, the depth of this shot. Now he's able to creep in McEnroe at full stretch. He's only able to slide that backhand down the line and gets the angle on the volley. That's what he needed for the winner. Like a kid with a new toy, that volley, isn't it? It's, uh, I mean, uh, mechanically, maybe not the soundest volley in the business, but with his ground strokes, he sets it up so well, Berger. Still game point. And that serve will do it for McEnroe, but he... He's still behind by five games to four, and Berger will serve. This is Old Montreal, where the artists hang out, the cultural center of this great Canadian French-speaking city of two million people. He will serve for the first set in the next match that you will see here alongside us, live from Montreal. Lindell, the number one seed, will play Andre Agassi, the number three seed in this championship. The seven player in the world against the number one. Jay Berger serving with new balls. They change every nine and eleven here, and so that's going to get a little bit more zip on the ball frame. But McEnroe all over the second serve. And there's the fine volley, but again, he's able to hook this two-hander in a full stretch. If McEnroe even gets to that one, gets it back, Berger's moving forward. He's pinpointed that one so far today. Mm -hmm. Two great shots from Berger in a row there to hold that first point. Dirty love, two Berger, points from the first set. Berger is doing everything he, he said he needed to do against Sean McEnroe to win this match. His first serve is up at about 75%. And he's winning the backcourt points, 63 to 29 percent, Berger over McEnroe. He's making some tremendous passing shots. And of course the reason that that first serve of his is so important is because if he gets it in, McEnroe's not going to be able to attack it. And you know that's what he's going to do if he sees a lot of second serves. This is set point three of them in a row for Jay Berger. Berger beat Lawson Duncan to win the USTA Clay Court Championships, Wild Dunes in Charleston, South Carolina. He has won two events before that. The second one he won was in Sao Paulo, Brazil. Last year he beat Horatio de la Pena. It was a slow, hard court that that match was played on. He won one in 86 in Buenos Aires on clay. winner from the back of the court from Jay Berger. He had to get a lot of stick on that forehand. Sets it up out here with the two-handed back end again on the line. McEnroe's outside that doubles alley. Watch this from behind the baseline. That's sheer power. That's tough to do. The percentages are not on there, but he just threaded that one down there without any problems. <laughs> it is 15 to 9 in winners. And who'd have bet that before this match started? Interesting stuff, isn't it? Berger playing so well before the US Open. And a lot of other players in very good form. Gilbert, for example, he's in the semis down in Cincinnati. He's playing so well now. I don't know whether anybody would bet on these guys as you watch the replay here winning the U.S. Open, but they are certainly spoilers for that championship, at the very least. 15, love.
Well, McEnroe has to pick it up a notch here if he's going to get out of this match. He hasn't been serving well. He's been beaten on the pass and shot. Again, his serve is actually quite high. It's at about 65%, but it, it just hasn't been that effective. There we go. His second ace of the day. John, John claims that at this point in, you know, in his comeback, so to speak, consistency is the key for him. He wants to be able to, to win all these kinds of matches. If he can get his consistency, then he can start getting all the other intricate parts of his game cooking. So he's trying to get a higher percentage of serves. They're coming back. Look at that. They just keep coming back at him. Unbelievable legs from Jay Berger. You know, that's got to be pretty quick to get that one because he was way outside when he stretched to get this. Look where he is when he makes this two-handed thing. Half volley from McEnroe inside the service line and Berger at full stretch. He holds that. It's like a curveball. He just curled it around down the line. William. McEnroe never thought he was even going to make it. Good game point. First game, second set. It's interesting because at 40 love, a lot of players wouldn't have run that one down. They're leading the set, they say, no, I'll save that for a while, but Berger's mm -hmm. just not of that mold at all. He chases everything. He runs through the wall. Ooh. Second serve pace from McEnroe. He wins the first game, second set, but he lost the first. We'll be back. When you talk about McEnroe saying, you know, at this point in my comeback, I know, if you look at his year and you say, if that's a comeback, then when does the guy arrive? Because he's only lost four matches and you go through it and uh, Lendl beat him in Australia and, uh, you know, two tie break sets. It wasn't that bad an effort from him. Becker beat him the, follow the next match, he, the next tournament that he played. That was in Milan. Then he won in Lyon. He won in Dallas. Those were back-to-back -back wins. And then Dallas, he beat Lendl, among other players. Yeah, but the, here's the comeback part comes in when you think that he hasn't won a Grand Slam well, that's title true. since 1984. I mean, it's been out since U.S. Open 1984. Yeah. I mean, five years without a Grand Slam title. That, that makes this... Uh, I think that's what makes it fair to say that McEnroe is trying to regain his form. 1984, we're talking about the fact that he's had only four losses... This yeah. year, in 1984, he had three, and I, I'll bet you you can't remember all three of them. I'll, I'll name them for you. Lendl. Lendl in Paris, right. right. VJ Amitraj beat him in Cincinnati, first round. Mm -hmm. And the only other loss he took on the entire year, Henrik Sons from Davis Cup. Ooh, that's right in the final. That's Ooh. the only... Three, yeah. three guys beat him, that's it, man. Yeah, but Jay Berger, there it is. Jay Berger had to uh, take a relief... Uh, off from the court now you can see they sent an official with the player there just that's just to so to show that they're not getting uh, any coaching or any advice off there but he's going to be running out of breath they go for a jog <laughs> off there and it's a it's a fair way to the locker room i wonder why he has from to the run center like court. That. well they've only got a three minute deal and it's uh, i would say even at, at a good jogging pace it's, mm. it's 45 seconds to get to the locker room Getting back to McEnroe for just a moment, as you see Berger getting himself uh, back in the uh, McEnroe waiting on him. Wimbledon this year, he got to the semi-final. He beat Mats Wielander there and John Fitzgerald, who played so well there. He beat Jim Pugh, Richie Renneberg, Darren Cahill, all good results. Cahill, of course, was an 8-6 in the fifth final. But, uh, of course, it's not a win for him, but a semi-final at Wimbledon is, again, not a bad result. If this is a comeback here for him, it's been a very, very good comeback. And then the next tournament he played was Indianapolis last week, which he won, of course. Well, McEnroe protected himself from the sun there while Jay Berger took a break from the action. And they're about ready to get back into this thing. First of two semi-final matches you'll see today. Canadian Open, the next match. And stay, stay with us because this promises to be a major event for the year. Heck, they may not play again. Lendl and Agassi in the semi-final. This is Berger serving trailing by one game in the second set. He won the first. final here along with us tomorrow at four o'clock eastern time well, well two line balls it was a great approach from McEnroe couldn't have been any better and uh, again Berger's preparation on that two hand uh, he, you know if anybody else in a shot like that would have to take one hand off the racket and he got back there took that one back down the line on the line he ever hit it with one hand, Fred? I don't remember. He's, he's always over this swinging with two. If he can't get to it. The only one that he does is when they play that short one and he's going to come in and...
push the ball back, but if he can have a crack at it, he always seems to be able to get two hands on it. Not like a Vlande who has two totally different shots. One is that that slice backhand, the other one the, the two-hander swing. Although he only just developed that in the last year, as you know. Thirty love. good, haven't they? So he hasn't even had to serve too many second balls. Actually, the, the, the shoulder injury that necessitated Jay Berger's awkward looking swing actually uncomplicates his serve to the point where he really should get an awful lot of first ones in. Mm -hmm. His take back is automatic. All he's got to really do is throw that ball up in the air and make, make proper contact. As you can see, there's very little that can go wrong in this. He's already in at the hitting position right there. If it's so successful, then why don't more people do it? <laughs> that was my next question, too. <laughs> I think a lot of it is, is aesthetically, it's not terribly pleasing. <laughs> You also obviously lose a lot of body rhythm. I think that's the answer. Mm. But I was thinking the same thing as you then, Mary, and uh, just I just marvel at the uh, control that he gets on that serve, and he does generate a fair bit of power. He served darn near as many aces last week in Indianapolis as did McEnroe. Mm -hmm. And the second serve had good depth and good speed on it. That. That's not a bad effort. That's got some horsepower behind it. time of the match for both players here because Berger knows he was down a break. McEnroe couldn't consolidate it. He came through and held on well in the latter stages of that first set. McEnroe knows he's got to get an early break here if he's to get the confidence and the rhythm to take this match to three sets. Deuce. for him, isn't it, when he makes an approach of that serve, I mean, it wasn't that good a second serve, and yet it flew on him, it wasn't even close. I think, uh, I made a remark earlier, I think the ball was getting up a little higher here than it did in Indianapolis, and of course that makes it tougher for McEnroe, because he's got to wrist it, particularly on the forehand side, he's got, and he's got to get right over the top of the ball. Even in the second set, one game more. Berger is going to the side. Let's see, he must be unhappy with his racket. Yeah, he's going to pick up another one. Kmart specials, those, because <laughs> they're not uh, making them anymore. So his dad goes and around and tries to buy them wherever he can. That's the uh, <laughs> Prince Pro, the aluminum racket, the 110, the oversized. They are available, Fred, because yeah. somebody's land for came out with one of those things on a Tuesday clinic that I put on. I said, where'd you get this? I don't think they yeah. made them anymore. Got them at Kmart. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> so they don't make them anymore, but you can still buy them. <laughs> Kmart shoppers. <laughs> Oh, 
definitely Bong McEnroe checking the call. That's double fault number three. Three for McEnroe, two for Berger. caught in two minds again as the serve was a little short so he moved five or six feet inside the baseline and uh, the direction that Berg is able to put on that two-hander he can change it. he goes down the line of the forehand or on that occasion he went deep into the backhand side and actually McEnroe had to back up to try and play a half volley well, this is a tight situation for McEnroe 15 30 in this game one game on second set, he lost the first. Yeah. There's a tremendous effort from both players here again. Fine swinging serve. McEnroe hits a great half volley here deep into the corner. And look what Berg is able to do. He's able to get there, get it back. And McEnroe, obviously looking for the one down the line, really has to stretch out. There's the half volley. Moves in now, covers there. He moves to the there to the, and he's got to stretch right out for the mm. backhand. Very good call, Fred, because I was thinking exactly the same thing. I thought Berger was for sure going to go down the line. So did McEnroe. thinker on the court, Jay Berger. There you go again. Look, he's won it before he had a tough time before he slices that lob there, and then he follows in. That's the rule of thumb, and then he's got a really stretch here, just able to hold the wrist firm enough to sneak mm. this little fella over right on the line. Mm. Macken is going over to where <laughs> he feels like the ball bounced, but as you can see on the replay, it did get the line. Hey, that, that's a tough call even for John McEnroe to make from where he oh, is. Oh, yeah, he was from. way off the court. <laughs> I mean, that's just, you ha he's just got to take his hat off to Jay Berger. And and he does, in fact, we, we've mentioned before how respectful McEnroe is of Berger. Watch this, Berger's broken two. He's had eight chances. There's another. Oh! <laughs> Slammed into the tape. <laughs> yeah, oh boy, he, he, he tasted that one, didn't he? And he just, uh, he hustled over there and then... A little anxious, maybe. So he said, what more do you want on it? You know, <laughs> that, uh, he tried to give that just a tad too much, I think. Don't you improvise as well to get to that break point, that lob slice is pure improvisation. Look at that. Oh, that's the wrong. He's really all over that McEnroe serve. I, I, it's unusual to see someone so confident in return of serve of McEnroe because that the McEnroe ball moves all over the court. He goes from flat to slice to kick wide. And again, Berger says it's just a question of committing early, taking your chance on one side. Yep. Did it again. Look at that. Ah. 
pleasure to watch this man play. I mean, you can talk about his two-handed cross court, but at the same time, you've got to give it to him. You're kind of like Chang. If you give him a chance, he can whack it down the line. Watch. That one served straight into the body. Did a good job to get out of the way and generate enough pace the way he did. Deuce again. Dings is sure not going to be able to overrule it. Mackino doesn't like it, of course. But he's going to have to take it. Possible to call this because he fades this forehand volley while it's going out that way because of the way it slides off the racket very close call there for him of course McEnroe needed that one for the game Deuce one game more I was sitting with a couple of the players watching the TSN coverage of last night's matches and on all the replays when the line calls go there and they say, them, so why do all the commentators always go along with the camera and oh, it got the line? Or it <laughs> on his serve throughout this match but he's hung on here in the second and leads 2-1 and that's why he's able to generate so much of it and I'll bet you any money you like if you ask Jay Berger after he got in that back scratching position did that racket move and then go back down there he'd say no <laughs> you tell him what uh, we just saw then yep. <laughs> because that's the reason he does it he mm -hmm. starts it off in the back scratching position though he doesn't have to go through that full swing and I believe he'd think it stayed there until the ball was in the air and he bent the knees and then jumped up at it well you know the thing is the shoulder injury that he had at the 18 nationals at Kalamazoo a couple of years ago he's over that now he, he just does this now because it's comfortable he's not doing it to, to guard against a, you know right a more tender shoulder oh yeah he is serving trailing one two second set he won the first set behind Two serve breaks, he was broken once, 6-4. Oh, this was McEnroe's problem last week. For most of the match, he was not able to handle the second serve from Jay Berger. Again, he tried to get in on top of that one, hit the approach. He's got to get into the net, but he just hasn't found the right formula as yet. Good, good improvisation, great play. About the only shot that would have won this for him. There's the big bolo two-hander. That's the little angle. It looks as though he's won it. McEnroe gets there. Berger scrambling for the sideline there. That's where he thought McEnroe had the only shot to play. And he throws up a very well-disguised lob. Yeah. 
kind of just moseying through a set early stage of second set. But uh, make no mistake, this is an important point. Could give Mackin a two break points. seen too many breakpoint opportunities. <laughs> That's right. He's got to convert one of these two. 1540. Mm -hmm. ah! Poor Jay Berger, his first serve percentage in the second set is down to 25. Remember, it had been all the way up to the 75% range. Explains a lot, doesn't it? There's the break. Yeah, I remember, though, it was just a game ago that he had McEnroe in trouble on serve and uh, wasn't able to, to convert on it. And now he is down a break, three games to one with McEnroe serving. It puts a little, a little different complexion on this, not only the set, but the match. Amazing the ebb and flow of a tennis match, though. A point here makes the difference now. McEnroe really has to bear down, concentrate, consolidate this situation to stretch the lead to 4-1. unless he gets some decent first serves in. Oh. Look at that angle again. <laughs> you love that, don't you, I, don't, I think it's a tremendous <laughs> shot. I, I, don't, I can't think of another player in the game who hits the backhand cross court as well as Berger. And again, it's not, you know, actually, Lendl owns a great cross-court backhand, but it's a chip. He slides it. Mm -hmm. I mean, Berger is quick enough and well-prepared enough to come over that ball and find the angle. You know, who, you know who used to hit it that well was uh, Harold Solomon. Had that, had that. Again, with a two-hander. I think mm -hmm. only a two-hander can play that shot. I don't think somebody that's a single-hander can really get that because they mm -hmm. don't have that shoulder rotation that the two-hander has to have on that backhand side. Another oh, error on the volley from McEnroe, and Berger has love 30. This is where McEnroe was unable to take advantage of the situation in an early break in the first set. Pretty much the same time, he led 3-1. Actually, history has repeated itself second set because the game scores exactly and it's gone the same way. McEnroe was down a break point. Berger was unable to do anything with it and then he broke and then Berger broke right back. 15-30. That didn't look like going in from the moment he hit it. It's fourth. Oh, so that gives Jay Berger two break points to come back here on serve anyway in the second set. Amazing McEnroe in that first set when he lost serve, threw in a double fault. So it just shows you that he's unsure of what he's doing on the serve, not the confident serve that we used to know. Richard Ings will not be impressed with that argument from Jay Berger. He, he has his say like McEnroe's, not quite in the same vicious way, but he let you know what he's thinking. So this is still break point.
Yep. McEnroe speaks of the difference in the last couple of years, the way players treat him. He said, you know, there's so many different players out there. He said, there's young players who didn't feel the mental strength that I had back in the old days, the early 80s. There's a lead court judge. As far as, yeah. his, as, far as his game is concerned, McEnroe says that he said, now I'm more apt to sit back on my second serve instead of serving and volleying behind first and second mm -hmm. because of the big returns in the game. He said there, there are subtle but important differences from when he played in the 80, the early 80s to now because of the changes in the game. When he comes in to make that ball. Oh! Yeah, it's been a combination, I suppose. Uh, but... Um, you're known to win two out of 11, it's not good. It means you haven't played the important points well. You've got there, but you haven't closed it out. Mm, that's just wide again. On the other side of the coin, though, it's got to be awfully frustrating for John McEnroe if he can break serve and cannot hold yeah. the way he's going. And he's been playing great tennis the last couple of weeks he's trying to get organized to get into the u.s open and this is something that he's talked about the lapse of concentration berg has had a lot of opportunities unable to convert but for mcenroe if he doesn't hang on here it certainly has to play on his mind deuce oh yeah he knew exactly where berger was going to go on that Passing shot and covered it. What a fine return from Berger here. McEnroe goes for the drop ball. He's not a good one. See where it bounces, gets too far back, but he's crowds over on that backhand side, anticipating the one down the line and really got there. Jay Berger knows that he went the wrong way on that one. Game point. No mistake, it, it, it's, it kind of preys on you too when you've had 11, 12 break point opportunities and you haven't got them. Next time you get one, you say, now just a second, what's going on here? Well, again, McEnroe in so much trouble on his serve, but he holds on and he leads the second set by four games to one behind one serve break. A reset. John McEnroe leading by four games to one in the second. He lost the first six games to four. This is the Canadian Open Tennis Championship semi-final day. This is the first of two matches you'll see today. Jay Berger playing John McEnroe. The next one will be Ivan Lendl, the number one player in the world, playing against the number three seed, Andre Agassi. Our serve has gone for him. Look at those first serve percentages. They've been dismal in the second set. All the way around. This is his third serve game. He's had chances to break McEnroe. Twelve of them in the match. He's converted two of them. That's not a good percentage for Berger. A few more of those and they could both be in the locker room by now. Oh! As it is, he's struggling in the second set. out here today it's a beautiful day clear mild warm not hot 
that brace on um, on Jay Berger's knee again is strictly for prevention. When he plays basketball or any other sport, he doesn't wear it. He had some knee surgery back when he was 15 years old and just feels more comfortable on the court having that elastic brace. Just part of your equipment, doesn't it? One of the first things you pack in the tennis bag. Yeah. 30-15. Fit about, uh, look at that, about 10, just over 10,000 people at the Jay Tennis Stadium. This used to be a baseball arena, so if, if you have an old baseball arena they don't use anymore where you are. Baseball stadium is not... <laughs> and you want an international tennis tournament just yeah. converted into that? <laughs> they're building new... There's going to be even more baseball in the next couple of years. More teams. More tennis stadiums, too. Talking about baseball, ESPN will be your network for baseball starting next year. And we're gearing up for it and looking forward to it. Football season about to start next year. Baseball. More tennis on ESPN than anything else. Golf. I love it. <coughs> Game point for Berger. It's a loose game from McEnroe in this second set. Didn't have to work too hard on his serve. Made his way into the net. Off this slider, this inside-out slide from McEnroe. That got Berger in. And an easy volley for, for a slight close in McEnroe's lead in this second set. Four games to two now. for Jay Berger here in the second set. He's had his chances to break McEnroe, but uh, he's going to have to take one either this game or the next. In truth, I think if you give McEnroe a 5-2 lead, you're going to have to, you'd have to put money on it. I see, talking about his concentration loss there, he can ill afford to do that. A double fault here just shows you the frailty of the serve at the moment. And his ability to concentrate in tough positions. You got more noise, please. <laughs> Crowds are much easier quicker to forgive Mackinac now for his outburst even against them. He has matured definitely in the last couple of years. His act has improved. He's still a very intense fellow. But it is nicer to go around the world like he does now with crowds adoring him rather than fighting him constantly. 15 all. the serve of old that one from McEnroe pinpoint accuracy really got some sting on that one I think the uh, serve has lost a bit of its horsepower and the boys see the ball a little earlier today than five or six years ago so they're jumping on his serve more often five games to two for McEnroe 
Well, the St. Lawrence River here in Montreal, or just next to it, is the gateway to the Great Lakes and the ocean on the other side, but it's horribly polluted. It's a big issue here. Well, we, we've been speaking about how much Jay Berger wants to serve in Bali these days, but in the second set, he's only had 28% first serves in, and that's why he's only been able to come in five times. And that's, that's made all the difference from that first set, which he took from John McEnroe, 6-4. It has nevertheless been so close, Mary, hasn't it? They've had chances on McEnroe's serve. And McEnroe, by the way, the 5-2 only represents one break of serve. Yeah. Feels like more, though, in this second set, doesn't yeah. it? Feels like Berger's way down. Mm -hmm. he, he's, he looks a bit anxious, you know. And when Berger's playing really well, he's moving so hard. That's a nice person. He, he moves so hard, and he seems to swing easily. He seems not to be moving as well in the second set, and his swinging seems very rushed-looking, very forced. He's serving at 2-5 in the second set. He won the first. Here's another example of it. No movement there at all. He just basically tried to upper body that ball over the net without really getting to it preparing early. And he's in, he himself now is in something of a funk. The same sort we saw we saw from McEnroe in that first set. As you know, this match started or just a little after one o'clock. It was due to start at one. The first ball is in the air, usually about, let's say, about eight to ten minutes after. It's now quarter to three, as you know. So we've been underway for quite a long time, and we are not through the second set yet. Game point for Berger. Three-quarter court. He hit that round arm volley from. Berger this year, after winning the first set, has won 21 and lost one. Mmm, bad move. McEnroe, on the other hand, after losing the first set, has a 5-4 to four edge. That's, that's a big stat for Berger. Only lost one match after he's won the first set. Also not bad for McEnroe, is it? Fred Guy loses the first set and still wins more matches than he loses. Game point still. Yeah. 5-3. Berger will have one more chance to break McEnroe here. If he doesn't, McEnroe will have leveled this match at one set all. McEnroe's first serve percentages, and we're both players there. McEnroe's pretty constant, whereas Berger, look at that, way, way down from 73% down to 28. That tells the story right there. And there's still only one service break, though. Agassi is the third seed in this tournament. He was in awful trouble against Kelly Everenden of New Zealand, but came through and won it down at break of serve in the third. He'll play Lendl later. Court point here. Look, he gets there and he threads the needle down the line. Look at Berger though. He moves forward, gets the second one, hits that, and then moves in again. Stands his ground, takes it on the fly. Good tennis there. Good net rushing tennis. And uh, as we said, he doesn't really like to go to the net too often, but when forced to, he can. 
15 all. Critical stages of this match, these next two points. Mike Leno shaking his head, a plane, small plane flying overhead. Gotta get used to the small plane flying overhead. When we get to Flushing Meadow, he's gonna have the monsters over there every 30 seconds, so uh, that's. Uh, Something that all the players going into the US Open have to contend with. Fifteen thirty. Oh. It looks so good when it works from McEnroe, and when he misses a volley like that, you say no. It's why does a guy try a low percentage play like that? A drop volley off a hard hit two-handed back. Tough shot to play. Now, McEnroe can hit those, and he does it time and time again, but... Smart play from Berger here, though, as he just chips that forehand back and then drills the two-hander, and McEnroe tried to stop volley, but uh, McEnroe's caught Berger on the forehand side with big serves. That time, Berger just elected to chip the ball back to get it into play. Break point. Again, he tried the same... How many break points is that now? Is it, this is the, was that 13 and 14 coming up. And Berger's only broken twice. But if he can make this one, he's right back on serve in oh, the yeah. second set. This is a, a great comeback against McEnroe. If Berger can pull off this break point. But again, Mary, I say, you know, that when you haven't been able to convert, it, it preys on your mind sometimes. You feel like things are just not going your way. Watch this. That being said, Cliff, it's also got to prey on McEnroe's mind that he's been in so much serving trouble. Trouble, right? Here's the second serve. I mean, you know, how long can you can you dance on the on the head of a pin? I'm not going to disagree with that for a moment. That is long. If you were either Cliff or myself, Mary, then we wouldn't have much of a chance of doing anything on the head of a pin, dancing. <laughs> but Look he at certainly has been in trouble here, but uh, Jay Bergen knows it as well, but he's had so many darn opportunities to yep. not convert. Well, McEnroe now has two points from winning the second set. It's a big difference, isn't it, from break point? $71,000 at stake just in this match to get to the final and then $143,000 to win it. McEnroe, and he helps by the net cord, so he rifles this, but look where that thing bounced, and Jay Berger had to take the two hands off that, and it set it up for McEnroe, but it was called just wide. Very important, and then maybe a very pivotal point. Final set in a moment. Struggled this year in the semi-finals, and that match will immediately follow this match that you're watching between McEnroe and Berger. That's how things stand. It is one set all. The final set is just about underway. Berger's had so many chances to break McEnroe in this match, has only been able to convert twice. On the other hand, McEnroe has won the important points when he's had the opportunity to do so. That's the record. Strong 13 points together in a row to win it. First ball, third set. Yeah. 
Michael, who uh, coaches and travels with the BP Australian squad, says, why don't they teach players today like they do on the backhand side to slice the approach shot? Why don't they ever teach them how to slice off the forehand side? They have this violent western grip and they cannot approach off anything but topspin. And you saw Berger there, especially on that low shot of the forehand, trying it. It's not an easy approach to make. He has a good point. I think the point to be made there really Cliff, is, you know, back in the old days, you know, nail bags and you know, all the other Aussies who played, they, they had grass court grips, you know, they did, they had a, a much simpler grip on which to approach. I mean, these days with a Western grip, how, how are you going to get under the ball? Well, you're going to change your grip, of course yeah, you cannot Yeah, that's do what that. I'm saying. I mean, there aren't yeah. too many guys, if you have a Western grip, you're more than likely a, a baseliner anyway, so you're not going to be comfortable in the short court to start with. Let alone to have to change a grip violently. This is a break point. Oh. That is why McEnroe has broken mailbags, by the way. <laughs> He's also known as Bob Carmichael. He's the same man we're talking about. Break a serve, one to Mackinac and third. Berger way down on the service percentages and the unforced errors. Look, McEnroe, many more, or not that many, but uh, quite a few more than Jay Berger, but he still came through and won the second set. Very closely contested match, and McEnroe has the break. First game, third set. I'm going to finish that story and just Mary, you brought up nail bags. They call him nail bags because he's a, or was a carpenter. But uh, as you watch this replay, I'm going to tell you that when I was talking to him yesterday, he said, I'm going to build my own house next year. I'm going to give up the BP squad. I've already told him I'm not going to do it. I'm going to build my own house. So he is a legitimate carpenter. And uh, Fred, I want you to tell us about another one of your great Australian guys, Ray Ruffles, because he also had an interesting nickname. Fella 15. What a great shot, just out of the reach of McEnroe, and he is really upset about that one because he had it on a string. But Jay Berger at full stretch here just gets it, and that's the only way he could have won this point. Down the line, McEnroe had it, cross court, he pretty much had it. That one was just out of his reach, right at the very top of the frame. Love 30. Second game, third set, McEnroe leads it one to nothing on a break. All Australians have nicknames, and uh, John Newcomb gave Ray Ruffles his nickname, Hesh, Hessian Bags, because he had a, bought a suit a long while ago that looked like the backdrop of the tennis courts that we used to use, and they used to have Hessian against the backdrop. While McEnroe's taking a break, I'll just finish that story. So that's it for the Aussie nicknames, and I'm not going to tell you how I got mine fiery. <laughs> Three break points for Berger. 
Ruffles and Carmichael used to play together, so it was Hessian bags and mail bags. That's right. If you if you have the bad fortune of meeting an Aussie on the day you have a head cold, forevermore you'll be called wheezy, sneezy, but these guys, you guys love coming up here. Back in row in trouble, can't consolidate the situation, and he's had problems doing it all day today. A few break points. Look at that. Again, good tactics from Jay Berger because he's been trying to crank up on that forehand. McEnroe went to the forehand again down the tee. Watch this. He's been trying to crack those, but now he's just blocked that one back, hoping to have a shot at the passing shot. The volley was not quite wide enough, but great foot speed from Jay Berger, and he, he really cranked up on that passing shot down the line. So we're all even at one all, third and final set. by McEnroe. He's an Australian with a nickname, Skippy. Mm -hmm. Skippy Ings, and uh, McEnroe just wants to know, tell the let court judge it's a net when it hits the top of the tape. That's why it is. It's the second time the, let man, the net man's judgment has been questioned. One each now from Berger and John McEnroe. You're watching Final the... set Go ahead. of this semi-final round match. The Canadian Open between John McEnroe and Jay Berger. A rematch of Indy last week. Great Indianapolis final that was, the U.S. hard courts. Perhaps the quality of tennis hasn't been as high in this match as it was last week, but it's every bit as competitive. There's virtually nothing between these two at this stage. Berger ahead now, 30-15 on serve, one game more. First of two semi-final matches you'll see today. Lendl and Agassi are waiting in the wings. watching Jay Berger's footwork through the binoculars here and uh, he's just on his toes at the back of the court in position for that forehand that's a little player very sound mechanical play he, he doesn't have the genius that Mackinac has but uh, certainly a thinker though Clifford oh, showed yeah. us that out there today oh. he knows what he's out there he knows what he's trying to do I mean Ted as you see him now have game point, but the fact is that when we talked about strategy between these two, I mean, I think mackinaw has got good strategy um, and, and he, he knows how to play Berger the right way, but you can put this guy out there and strategically he's as good as anybody in the sport, I think. Well, great point there. He hasn't been in, served and volleyed for quite a while and 30 all, big point, gets the first serve in, nails the forehand volley. And it's, um, you know, some of it, of course, is an intellectual thing, but more of it, in my opinion anyway, is just instinct.
Again, the right play from Berger. He's got game point. He tries to keep the pressure on McEnroe. This one's not down the line enough. It's in the middle of the court, and McEnroe right there. Doesn't give much ground. You can see McEnroe only about three feet behind the baseline when he attempted that pass. Made a successful backhand. Deuce. Deuce, one game all. One said all this match again is dead solid even. <laughs> McEnroe through the binoculars that time with his footwork. It's amazing just for you folks. Them little steps, that's all it takes from the back of the court. They're not big steps, they're little steps so they can get in position to make the shot. That is what it takes. You, you wonder sometimes. Cold along, another break point for McEnroe. has had so many more chances. play from Jay Berger there as John McEnroe has break point short second serve McEnroe doesn't quite decide to come in but look he gets caught three quarter court he's got to back up to play a half volley then he moves about another 10 feet further back expecting that explosive forehand but just too much mustard on it goose That one, and that'll go long. Another break point for Mexico. Uh, return of serve, tailor made for the slice approach, but Burger doesn't have that shot. Ooh, yeah, good call. Good correction, I mean. Clearly in, and he knew it, so we changed, and I love to see that. I don't like to see it too often. No, but you'd rather see that than stay with a bad call. Everybody gets nervous then if they keep overruling every two or three games. In fact, nobody has held serve. 2-1 for McEnroe in the third. All John McEnroe, this is how he got to another service break in this third and decisive set. Great reflex on the volley there, but look at the anticipation. He knows where that one is going. A firm wrist and a good deep volley, and you can see Jay Berger's reaction right there. Can he keep doing it, Fred? Can he keep uh, coming back here, Berger? He did once in this. Set. Similar pattern to last week, Cliff, you know, the, that's been the ebb and flow of the match, the same type of match. And uh, McEnroe finished up reeling off 13 points in a row last week. The same thing could possibly happen here, but then again, Jay Berg is not going to give up on anything. And in this third set, nobody's held serve as yet. Mm. Close call, eh, Mary? At this point, isn't it? Mm. 
Look, look how alert, anxious Berger is to return here. So that shows he still feels very much in this match. I don't think there's any doubt in his mind, is there, that uh, this is still a very close call. Both of them, in fact. baseline both players good depth and McEnroe hits the short one but watch this good preparation on the point he drills it straight down the line listings on ESPN today you might have seen our time frame between one and four o'clock this afternoon we are not going to deprive you of watching Lendl and Agassi in the second of our semi-final singles matches today so you don't plan anything for four o'clock we'll be here nice way to follow up a six double fall that's McEnroe's fifth eight Long afternoon all round, so grab a couple of cool ones, put your feet up. <laughs> yeah, that soda goes down well at this time of the day. has held on. That is the first hold of serve by either player. Three games to one. McInerney leads it in the third set. This is still a close match by any definition, but Jay Berger has got to hold on to serve here in order for that to continue to be true. You give McInerney two breaks and it won't be long in this match's history. trouble again for Jay Berger. Third double fault and he's been broken three of the last five times he's stepped up to the plate. So he's he's really he seems rattled, doesn't he? He doesn't doesn't seem like he's he's gonna be able to pull it all together. The scenario's been the same for the three sets this afternoon. McEnroe's gone ahead to an early break in all three sets where he's held a three one lead. Lost the first set, lost the break immediately, and then he served, and Jay Berger won that first set. 3-1, then 4-1. He got out and won the second set, 6-3. A 
good topspin lob there. That's the first decent lob that McEnroe's played today, and he does the right thing, follows it up. That's the rule of thumb. As soon as that ball gets over your opponent's head, get into the net. Had the open court to deal with when he got there. Spot. Break point. Three of them. More than anything, Berger told himself and told us that he needed to get first serves in against McEnroe, and that's exactly what he hasn't done in the last two sets. Well, that's a break of serve, a second one, and now John McEnroe is very much in control, a four-game to one lead, two serve break. Well, this is the Olympic venue for the 76th Summer Games, swimming and diving here in Montreal. Yeah. McEnroe in the uh, first of two semi-final matches that uh, are going to be played today, McEnroe is two serve breaks and, and a four-game to one lead, so he'll serve and now. And this is Jay Berger after having to take a... A break, remember, in this legacy for the second of two semi-final matches, you will see the final of the Canadian Open men's singles tomorrow afternoon at 4 o'clock Eastern Time. Again, this is what has haunted McEnroe. This one at full stretch, Berger teed off on that forehand. McEnroe at full stretch tries to throw it up in the air. Berger hits it anyway, but it was just a practice swing. McEnroe thought that it may have been good to call. That's a tremendous lob. That had so much work on it. McEnroe had no chance to chase that down. Really a very pretty play. And this is a shot that Berger practices a lot. It's a topspin lob off the backhand side. It's over the backhand side of the incoming volley, which really makes it for McEnroe to get back to that. He's really got to get himself off balance. Another break point denied, Jay Berger. So often today, that has been the case. He's had his chances. 16 break point mm. chances now, and yeah. he's only converted three. <laughs> Mike, look at his percentages on break. Five out of seven. Still two break points for Berger here, though. So. You saw that ball, Ash? The ball was right on inside the line. I don't see any margins out. Jesus Christ, man, the line's hit. I can't believe you didn't see that. Skippy Ings of Australia is not impressed by that uh, rather vehement That was a quiet argument. one, though. That was a, a gentle disagreement. I don't <laughs> think that one, because uh, he didn't know whether he wanted to say on the line or inside the line. That was just a quiet gesture on his part. Yeah. Wins the point anyway. Berger will have another break point chance. And again, uh, you know, having had that many chances, uh, Berger's had, and he's just converted so few as you watch this replay again. It preys on you finally, and you say, now just, what, you know, what can I do to break serve? I get the chances and don't put them away. McEnroe, on the other hand, is also aware of that. He's had his chances, convert five or seven. He knows that puts pressure on Berger. Break point. Oh, yep. Sign of a champion. When you're under the gun, you've got to come up with the goods. He hasn't been serving very well all day, but boy, under pressure. Hasn't been as much as Berger's bad play on those break point opportunities as the mental toughness of John McEnroe. Oh. You 
go from hitting a big first serve into getting back to deuce and then you miss that one. That one missed by 20 feet, that first serve. Going to a match. I mean, if you tell a guy afterwards, what's he going to say? You've had 19 chances to break. But again, uh, you know, that's great. Yeah, that's, yeah. You know, he's he's found that big serve, and he's followed up with a volley for for Berger to break. He's got to come up with a miraculous passing. Yeah, shot no, McEnroe like has that. served, especially in this final set, very very well. Look at that, another beauty. Oh. McEnroe has not been fined this week. He's had some code violations against him, though he hasn't had one this match. The loneliness of the long-distance runner. Here's a reaction of, of McEnroe. I mean, these boys are out there alone, too, though, aren't they? 10,000 people watching them, and it's, it's hot out there. Break point again. parker has got to be begging for a double fault. He's got to be 20th break point. Siggy, come on, Matt. Give me a, give me some. Give me a break. There it is. Well, that turns it around some, doesn't it? He had two breaks of serving hand here in set number four at four games to one. He has been broken here by Berger, and that means that this match is still very much alive. Berger will serve here at four two now. Berger's not had much success on his own serve, though. This set percentage has been way down after winning the first set. Again, Berger taking full advantage of a high ball. McEnroe's that let cord gives him a high shot, and he's so tough off a high ball, Berger. That net really helped him. Um, scratchy stuff here from McEnroe, this crucial stages of the match. Uh, He got a little bit of luck in the first point when McEnroe hit that lead mm -hmm. core that he was able to jump on. And when you win the first point of the game, that that gives you your confidence such a boost. Game point for him, 40 love. Well, when we come back, McEnroe still has a break to serve, but only one left. He'll serve at four games to three in the third. Van Lendl in the next semifinal match. That'll come up just as Young man, Jay Berger. The flair of John McEnroe has got them all interested. He still sells a lot of tickets. It's only the second time they've played. The first time they played was six days ago in Indianapolis. McEnroe won it. Berger's making a quick racket switch. John McEnroe was saying last week that, you know, 
unlike these guys, most guys like Berger, Yvonne Lendl, who have exactly the same tension in all the frames they bring out on the court. John says, I bring out seven or eight rackets, and they've got about five different tensions in them. Between games, he fiddles around to see which one he'll like. Depends on his touch on the day, what he likes. He says it takes a couple of changeovers, really, before he can find the one racket he really likes. He can only test a couple on, on a changeover. Why don't he do it in the locker room before he goes out? Well, that's why he brings so many out, Fred, because he'll be playing a match and decide that he's not getting quite the touch he needs on his volley. And he'll switch to a racket, and then he'll switch back and forth. He's, he's crazy, is what I'm saying. <laughs> Dirty love. Yep. This is the Canadian Open Tennis Championships. First of two semifinal matches you'll see today, live from Montreal, Quebec. John McEnroe is playing against Jay Berger. He leads four games to three. They are level at one set all. He's serving at 40 love. This is the Jerry Tennis Stadium in Montreal. Second semi-final match between Lindell and Agassi will follow as soon as this is over. Simplest serving game for Jay Berger. In such a long while, he's had all kinds of problems, hasn't he, the last two sets? Against McEnroe and his return. Been broken all over the place. Kinds of chances to break John McEnroe. You'll only get one more. McEnroe with 56. I with a backhand passing shot. Now, McEnroe wins this point. And later the match, 4 6, six, three, six four. So he advances to the finals tomorrow to play Yvonne Lindell. Hello there. Along with John Saunders, I'm Chris Fowler. Thanks for joining us once again on Sports Center. We start with that wacky race in the American League East. It just keeps getting crazier every day. Yeah, it seemed like for a long time no one wanted to grab hold and take charge. That is changing now. The Baltimore Orioles have to be the team facing the most disbelief this season. Everyone's been waiting for the O's to fall since April, but here it is August. This is taking precision. This is match point. McEnroe went on to collect one of his three singles titles of this year. Now, Lindell says that he's here in Montreal to fine-tune his game for the U.S. Open, and yesterday he had to beat a determined Andre Agassi in a brilliantly played third set. McEnroe repeated his win over a feisty Jay Berger at the hard court last Sunday, but again he had to claw his way to the win. Credit McEnroe, he's winning, but he's not yet at the top of his game. They've played 30 times before, each winning 15. 